Hello everyone and welcome to Q30 Sports' first ever hitting tutorial. I'm joined alongside Vin Galetti, Quinnipiac baseball first baseman and slugger, and I'm Mark Spillane. Vin, you're a local guy, East Haven High School. What's it like being here at Quinnipiac right down the road? Uh, well, it's nice because my family gets to come and watch me play and do what I love to do most. Um, it's easy to commute back and forth, so if I ever need anything, it's nice. Um, but mostly representing Connecticut and playing here at Quinnipiac under Coach Delaney and uh, Coach Ness and Coach Mergs and uh, Coach Egan. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a good feeling to be here. Now, you're a senior this year. You've been around for a while now in your fourth season. What's it like being a leader for a team that's kind of on the rise? Uh, well, it's easy to be a leader on the field because I have great guys around me and, you know, the coaches are great with everybody, not just me. Um, so, you know, makes it easier when everyone's towards the same goal, which is the win a MAC championship. So, um, I mean, it, all I do is try to do my best on the field and help my team win. Now, you were brought in as somebody who was here to turn the program around. What lessons did you take from those first few years where you guys struggled only nine wins your first year that helped you to be successful now? Um, well, it made us appreciate the wins. Uh, I know all of us as seniors on the team and even the juniors too, they understand that um, wins should not be taken for granted and you have to work hard for them. So, um, you know, Coach Delaney and everyone else on the staff has really um, emphasized the fact that you have to work hard to win games. And uh, the first few years when we struggled, we kind of understood firsthand that, you know, we really need to work hard and do what we have to do, do the small things correctly in order to, uh, order to win games. And, you know, it's been working for us so far this year. So far, so good, I would say. Now, now taking a look at your statistics over the last few years, freshman, 276 for a freshman, you know, not, not a bad year. Moved to 284 as a sophomore. Then last year, you really jumped up 341. This year, you're batting 336. What's been the biggest part of your progression as a player in your four years at Quinnipiac? Uh, my mental approach to the game. Uh, when I first came in as a freshman, I really didn't know what I was doing at the plate. I kind of just went up and hacked. You know, I didn't have a plan. Um, and I didn't know I was going to be pitched as, uh, you know, as tough as it was going to be. So, you know, I really didn't have an idea of what I was doing. Um, my sophomore year still struggled up at the plate, you know, as my uh, numbers probably indicate. I, I struggled a little bit, you know, mentally. Um, but when I went to Plymouth in the NECBL that summer, uh, my uh, hitting coach there, he really helped me with, okay, these are the pitches you're going to see from these types of pitchers and these are their best pitches, what they're gonna do in certain counts. Um, so I started to pick those pitches out. And when I came back here after a decent summer, um, I really worked on that every day with Coach Delaney. He really, you know, he liked that I heard that in Plymouth and it definitely helped me here. So when I got up in the box, instead of just trying to hit whatever came my way, I tried to pick something out and uh, hit a mistake. And that's what I've been trying to do you know, the past couple of years, and it's been working so far. All right, you talk about your approach. Yep. Now, let's, let's actually start. You're in the dugout. Mm -hmm. You're coming up. Yep. Forget about the situation, any situation. What's the first thing that goes through your mind? What are you thinking about? Your hands, your hips, what are you thinking about? Uh, I don't think about anything swing-wise because that's what practice is for. Practice, you work on your swing, your hands, your legs, whatever I need to work on to get ready for the game. Um, as I'm coming up in the box, I have one pitch in mind, and that's all I think about. And as soon as my feet get in between the box, um, all my thoughts are gone. All I'm focused on is the pitcher and that one pitch that I'm looking for. And most of the time, I get it once, maybe twice. Um, but I make sure, if, even if it's a curveball, a fastball, it doesn't matter. If it's in my zone, that's the pitch I'm looking for. And I try to put a good swing on it and make sure I don't miss it. Now, if you had to describe the sweet spot for you, most lefties like it down and in. Are you similar to them, or you got a different spot? Um, yeah, I'm not really, I don't like, I mean, of course, down and in, it's easier to get some elevation on the ball, but anywhere around the plate, either up or down, um, since I have long arms, I'm able to see the pitch deeper, and I could hit it to left center or right center. So anywhere around the plate from, you know, corner to corner, you know, is pretty much my sweet spot. If it's anywhere around there you know, I could put a good swing on it and uh, drive it a good ways. Now, is there a different approach you might take in terms of where you might stand in the box, depending if there's guys on base, say, maybe there's less than two outs guy on third, you moving up in the box or something, or is that everything stay um, the same? No, nah, everything pretty much stays the same unless the pitcher's throwing really slow and my timing is, you know, ahead of the pitch, in which case I'll move up a little bit, you know, just so I could get better timing. But for the most part, it really doesn't matter the situation. I have the same approach every time, which is, you know, get comfortable where I am in the box, uh, try to drive something up the middle and uh, put a good swing on it. I mean, it really doesn't matter the situation. 
You got a favorite hitter. Where'd your inspiration come from? Uh, I watch a lot of hitters. Uh, Cano's probably my favorite hitter. You know, I really like, he's got a really smooth uh, swing. You know, his hands are really smooth. Everything about him, I really like when I watch him hit. You got a particular count you like to hit in? Uh, plus count, so 2-0. 2-1, 3-1, like, like most hitters. Yeah, even 3-0. You know, sometimes Coach Delaney gives me the green light. Uh, you know, he, he tells me, you know, he'll, he'll go like that, which means if it's in your spot, go for it, you know, so. You guys have certainly had a great year. I'm going to take a quick step back here now. Sure. And take me through what your approach is in terms of your mechanics, and then we'll let you take a swing at the ball here. So okay. how you like to set up, and, I, and a lot of people know that you've got a little bit of power, especially this year with your five home runs, but yeah. we've talked about this before. You're a gaps, doubles kind of hitter. Yeah. So why don't you take me through your approach mechanically? All right, so I just like to get comfortable in the box. You know, sometimes if the, if the dirt's a little high, I like to make a hole from my back foot, you know, so I can get a good spin off. Um, I like to get wide. I feel like I get more power that way. And I try to get down in my slouch a little bit because if I stand up too straight, then I'm more likely to yank instead of through the ball. So what I do is, you know, I point the bat, I put my hands back a little bit. And the most important thing about hitting is you got to be comfortable in the box. If you're not comfortable, it's going to be five times harder to hit the ball. I mean, hitting a baseball is hard enough. So if you're already comfortable in a good position, it's a lot easier to hit. So my comfort zone is, you know, pretty wide. I like to have my hands back nice and loose. I like to move them a little bit. And then once I see my pitch in my zone, I take a nice hack at it. And, you know, I make sure I get my legs through the ball, make sure my hands extend through the ball. I don't want to yank. I don't want to dip too much. What I try to do is stay level and work through the ball no matter where the pitch is. And the rest of, you know, that comes after that is timing. So if it's outside, try to catch it deeper. If it's an inside pitch, I try to catch it in front of me. So. Now, when you're dealing with, say, a fastball versus an off-speed pitch, is there anything about the way you're moving before the pitch is delivered that changes? Um, no, everything's pretty much the same except the timing. If it's an off-speed pitch, the reason why I'm down and I have my hands back is if it is an off-speed pitch and I'm a little fooled, even if my hands are still back, I can still put a decent swing on it and maybe flare it to left field and let it you know, dunk in somewhere. Um, if my hands come forward too fast, then I lost all my power, and it's very hard, very difficult to hit the off-speed pitch with my hands here out in front of me. So that's why I keep my hands so far back. If it's an off-speed pitch and I get fooled, at least they're still back, and I can you know, put a, a decent swing on it. I mean, I know if I get fooled, I'm not going to be hitting the ball over the fence. I'm just trying to find you know, a hole somewhere in the field. Now, something that I know is a big part of your game this year is a little bit of power that maybe you didn't have in the past years here at Quinnipiac. You had a nice summer in the NECBL. We talked about that a little bit. And then the power that I mentioned here, you were putting in a lot of work on your legs in the gym during the offseason. Is that where all that power is coming from, or is there something else going on? No. I mean, there, I did work very hard this winter. Uh, I strengthened my legs up because I know that, you know, 90% 90, 90 of your swing is your legs. I mean, your arms are really just, you know, slings for the bat. So I knew um, developing my leg strength was very important in uh, the power swing that I wanted to get down. So yeah, I did work a lot on, you know, I deadlifted a lot, I squatted a lot, you know, try to strengthen my legs up because I know as a hitter, that's where most of your power comes from, if not all your power, and everything else just falls into place after that. Two more questions I have for you. Sure. I've noticed in watching you, when you come up to the plate, before you get in the batter's box, you take your bat and you draw something in the dirt. What are you drawing every time? Uh, that's a cross from my grandmother, and uh, unfortunately, she just passed away. Um, so, you know, when I'm drawing that in the dirt, that's what it is. It's a cross for her. You know, it, it puts me in a mental state of, you know, okay, relax. I'm playing for my family. I'm playing for my teammates. I'm playing for my team. So, you know, it, it, it gives me a sense of relief before I step in the box. You know, I take a deep breath, and once I'm in the box, I'm locked and ready to go. It helps clear your mind. You mentioned you don't think about anything when you get in the box. Yeah, that's right. Because if you think too much in the box, like I said earlier, it's hard enough to hit the ball. If you see a ball coming at you and you're thinking about a hundred different things, I don't care how good of a hitter you are, you're not going to be able to hit the ball because you need to be focused 100% on what's coming at you. Last question for you. Ten years from right now, right here at Quinnipiac, mm -hmm. when people say, remember Vin Galetti when he played here, mm -hmm. what's the next thing that's going to come out of their mouth? What are they going to say about you? Oh, I hope they say uh, he was a good person, a good teammate, a good friend, 
and uh, I'm proud to say I played with him. Uh, that's what I hope they say. Well, you're certainly having a great year this year. You did last year, and I think a lot of people have a lot of positive things to say. That's Vin Galetti, Quinnipiac first baseman, and right now the leader of the team offensively, but he's got a lot of help, and the Bobcats are looking to make a push towards their first MAC championship. For Vin, I'm Mark Spillane. Thanks for watching.